Well, hello again, um, and welcome to our webinar today, where we are going to be talking about how CRM plays into the new CX ecosystem. My name is Kathleen Owen. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Campango, and uh, we'll just be acting, essentially, as your host and MC. And we just want to thank everybody who's taken the time to join us today for our 30-minute webinar. Um, it's my pleasure to present uh, the presenters and panelists who are really the star of, of the show. We have Scott Bickley, who's the channel manager, um, and he'll be talking through really our trusted advisor model uh, through Intellisys and with our channel partners. He'll also be touching on um, compensation. And then we're going to turn it over to Mort, who's our director of global sales here, who's going to talk about kind of a working definition of CX. What does this mean for you? Um, we know that it's, it's kind of a buzz term, and so we want to narrow the scope of our definition. Um, also be talking about how CX and, and worker experience and organizational health are connected in this ecosystem. And then, you know, we want to bring things from concept to, to um, reality. And so Mort's going to be sharing a lot of examples about how companies have used CRM to really drive CX and WX within their organization. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, we do have a chat function and a Q&A function. We certainly encourage and like participation. So feel free to ask questions. And uh, if those questions are timely, we'll, we'll go ahead and answer those during the webinar. Otherwise, we'll leave plenty of time at the end. We are recording the webinar as well, so we will send this recording out within the next 24 to 48 hours, along with just some other um, kind of high value pieces of content that expand on the story we're telling you today. And lastly, if you want to delve into anything deeper <clears throat> or there's something in particular that interests you during this conversation and this discussion today, please contact Scott Bickley directly. You see his email address. Um, or you can actually use the Calendly link that you see there. You have access to Scott's calendar, and you can just book time directly with him. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Scott, uh, who will talk through Campango, our relationship with the channel partners. So Scott, go ahead. Thanks, Kathleen. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday, everybody. Um, I see there's a couple of new folks on the call, so I'm just gonna fly through this real quick just to give you a bit of background on Campango, uh, really where we are and what we're doing today. Um, so as the slide would dictate, we are predominantly based in North America. Milwaukee is our head office, which is where I sit today. Uh, we do have a large office in London and a growing presence in South Africa where we have a number of uh, developers and staff that, that we can leverage all full-time uh, FTEs, no, uh, no BPO model with us. Um, growing, that slide probably should be a little bit uh, updated now. There's around 100 of us uh, today at Campango with over 100 Salesforce certifications. Um, one of our leader architects is actually uh, one of seven globally uh, at his level of certification. So uh, we certainly have the capability across uh, the majority of Salesforce products and services that we can uh, deliver and implement for your customers. Um, talking of customers, we have probably around 600 or so customers today with around 1,000 projects completed. So a number of uh, customers come back for, for multiple phases, which again is exciting for you guys out there talking about Campango services as what we do today with your customers is evergreen for you. So whether you're in the room or not, that revenue will still flow through to you. Um, Salesforce Gold Consulting Partner, which basically gives you access to uh, a number of different um, uh, support tools. So again, obviously, uh, speedy, speed and accuracy when it comes to implementing Salesforce products and services. So how does this make you an indispensable partner? Again, we touched on this last week, but for the folks that are here new that, that, that weren't uh, engaged on last week's webinar, and by all means, go back and um, search that out on the Camp Campango website and the Intellisys uh, website. Really, the purpose of working with someone like Campango is that we help you elevate your conversations throughout the whole organization. Today, you may be talking to the, to the uh, technology team around CCAS, UCAS, uh, de uh, disaster recovery services. Working with, with a Salesforce integrator like ourselves helps you get into the sales teams 
the marketing teams, helps you to have conversations at, at the C-suite board level around business strategy and how they can evolve their organization through the use of really cool technology like Salesforce uh, and leveraging that as a platform which gives them uh, opportunity to grow their business and drive revenue. So we're excited to give you that opportunity um, and to make you or to help you become a trusted partner within your, your customer organizations. Again, the engagement model, obviously the customer is yours. You own that relationship. Uh, Campango, we'll, we will provide you with strategy and services around uh, business process management uh, and technology implementation and integration services predominantly through the Salesforce platform. Uh, we are obviously able to integrate a number of different tools and uh, applications to Salesforce. Uh, again, be that the CCAS world that, that really helps when, it, when we start talking about customer experience uh, and worker experience that Mort's gonna go through in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But coupled to that, pretty much anything and everything that an organization is using internally can be integrated to Salesforce and this is where we help with those conversations and bring that through the process for you. So that was just really a quick recap on Campango and why, why we really are uh, adding value for you and through to your customers. Um, really the key thing, how does it work in terms of compensation? We're not monthly recurring revenue, we are project-based fees. So I, again, obviously we know that that's a little different uh, in terms of what you've been used to in the past. Uh, but, but hopefully this is becoming more and more commonplace for you now. Um, Salesforce doesn't compensate uh, on any of their licenses. So really the value that you're going to drive in terms of revenue is going to be on the project based fees um, and our professional services, which is why it's important to really work through business processes with your customer to make sure that we are uh, able to grow um, their, their revenue by implementing really cool Salesforce products and services. Um, it's evergreen revenue, as we uh, mentioned before, but, but Salesforce, again, doesn't do any renewal revenue on licenses. The percentage today paid through to Intellisys is at 20%. Um, and then obviously, you guys out there have your own deals with Intellisys in terms of how much of that you recover. So um, a lot of interesting opportunities. Um, at project fees obviously can be significant. Um, and obviously that, that revenue for you is evergreen. So uh, multiple phase projects helps uh, customers really understand what their journey uh, looks like through the Salesforce ecosystem. So without further ado, Mort, let me hand it over to you to talk through where we're at in terms of CX. Yeah, thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy to be on this call to talk about a topic that I'm actually very passionate about. So. CX, which is essentially an acronym for customer experience, uh, is something that I think is an absolutely critical part of any B2B conversation. Now I'm gonna to explain to you what CX is, not through definition, but through a story, a personal story as a matter of fact. So uh, in January, I was flying from Milwaukee to LaGuardia uh, in New York on Delta Airlines, and uh, there was some weather that kind of impacted the flight, pretty substantial delay. Uh, and after my flight, I called up the Delta call center, a customer service line. I spoke to a, uh, a young lady. She was very helpful, very apologetic. And essentially, they gave me a 10,000 free miles uh, for my inconvenience. So I thought that was a great customer experience. I loved it. As an IT guy, I immediately thought to myself, well, how did they do that, right? So the inbound call came in. There was probably some IVR, some type of CTI somewhere. The call routed to the proper person. The person knew exactly who I was based on my called in number. They were able to pull up my account. They were able to see, you know, see I have platinum status. Maybe that played a role in what type of uh, you know, like benefit they provided me. And then I also thought to myself, well, now this call is logged somewhere. It shows I made a touch with you know, Delta. And then, of course, there was, a, there was kind of like a related payout. So, so that for me was a fantastic customer experience and I was able to kind of rationalize in my mind what is the technology play that, that kind of got me there. Now fast forward to Monday. Monday, I'm flying back home uh, from a family trip and I was flying from Detroit to Milwaukee. Uh, we had a pretty severe weather delay. There was, some, there was some weather in Milwaukee and again, my flight was delayed. Now I'm sitting at the Detroit airport at 2.30 in the morning my flight has just been delayed. I am 
is very frustrated. I'm aggravated. And the first thought that went through my mind was, you know what? I'm going to call the call center. Um, I'm going to have a great experience. They're going to give me 10,000 points and I'm going to be happy. So I was already prepared to have a great customer experience. Guess what happened, guys? While I'm sitting at the airport at 2.30 in the morning, I get an email from their customer service department telling me, hey, very sorry, Mort. We noticed your flight was delayed. Here's the reason it was delayed. Here is your next flight out. And guess what? We're giving you 10,000 points. Guys, that to me is not just customer experience, but the progression of customer experience. So the customer experience for me always starts with a journey. And the journey is not just when you talk to your customer, the journey happens at every level of interaction with your organization. The fact that the second time I went through this, I never spoke to anyone at Delta. I didn't touch anyone at Delta. There was no proactive touch point with Delta, but the journey still happened. The interaction still happened, but it happened at a different level. And I think that's really what helped it stand out. Also, if you think about how it happened, that intersection point of how they reached out to me and proactively solved my problem before me ever even letting them know a problem existed, the impact of that was tremendously more for me. So the first time I called them, they solved my problem. The second time they just solved my problem without me ever calling them. So the weight of that experience is significantly more. And that's why I shared that story with you today. And when you think about customer experience, the customer journey, you always think about it from the customer perspective. You think of it from my experience, from my perspective, but then you can rationalize in the background how that's happening. So I shared with you the first step on how I thought the IT uh, you know, supported my journey. In this second step, guys, you know what they added? They probably added some type of a marketing tool. Right? They added some type of a tool like a Pardot or a marketing cloud, things that we at Kentango service, and that tool told them, guys, guess what? Last time when this happened with Mort, he called in, we gave him 10,000 points. This time, let's save ourselves some money on that inbound call. Let's save ourselves some money on the time that we have committed to whatever hours that person has to use to respond to the call, and let's use those hours for something more beneficial to the organization but let's still take care of more as a customer. So I think that when, they, when you look at it from a customer's perspective, that's where the solution comes from. But the journey to get there is all IT and technology based and it's all gonna be based in the background. Another really critical point about customer experience is all about the comparative nature of it. Delta is not the only airline I fly. I also fly American. As a matter of fact, uh, my wife and I are going on our honeymoon. We're leaving in two weeks and we're taking American but when we get to Europe, we're taking three other airlines to go all over the place, right? So Delta is not even going to be in play there. But you better believe that while I'm on these airlines, I'm immediately going to be comparing their service, their interaction, their automation to my experience with Delta. So customer experience is always comparative. And when you talk to your customers about the value of customer experience, the way you make yourself stand out as an expert is to tell them, guess what? When we talk about your customer experience, we're talking about your customer experience in the grand scheme of things. And it's critical to help them with some of that industry research and make sure that they understand where their comparative benefit sits within their competitive set. And that's a great way to add value to your customer. And you also have to understand where within a customer journey, you level set the direction. So, what that means is when you are an airline, as I gave the example, um, the airline is essentially the upstream step into my journey or, you know, or the downstream step into my journey. When I flew out on Delta, I was starting a vacation. When I flew back on Delta, I was ending a vacation. So depending on the identification of that step, you can level set the direction or how you approach. If I, in my opinion, when you think about customer experience, if I'm on my way somewhere, I'm probably less likely to be upset about something bad happening because I'm going to a fun destination, right? right? So if you have the data point that says Mort's going on vacation, I'm probably willing to compromise some customer experience because I know that the end is going to be something fun. But on the flip side, if I'm coming back from vacation, I've just had an awesome time, uh, I'm going to be more needy 
when it comes to my customer experience needs. And this is the type of intelligence that uh, we can help you with some research, some market research, and, and like help you understand that within each industry, how that uh, identification uh, is very, very important. So let's talk a little bit about how technology and some of the technology functions uh, can kind of coexist inside of the customer experience ecosystem. This is a graph you're probably going to start to see more and more as you work with Campango because Campango, Intellisys, Salesforce have a very strong and conscious effort of moving towards customer experience as a solution uh, as we look at our strategy for 2019 as well as moving into 2020. So having an enabled workforce, and you enable your workforce through tools. You're going to enable them through things like the Salesforce platform, or you can have that customer 360 view. You're going to empower that workforce by giving them data that's being collected from tools like Pardot and Marketing Cloud. Again, tools that, uh, you know, we have experts here at Campango to help you navigate. We're going to engage that workforce. We're going to engage the workforce by making sure that they have proactive steps and actions available to them. So when I call them for support, we're going to engage them by making sure all the data they need is there. And we're going to make them act on that data through giving them some, some, you know, some, you know, some industry best standards. One of the things, and probably the, the reason I'm so passionate about customer experience is the impact on your worker culture. When you start talking to your customers about their culture and how customer experience can benefit their culture, it's a tremendous conversation. It's an empowering conversation because you can teach them that, hey, by influencing the customer experience, you can create value for your internal culture because you are now setting yourself apart as a company who's customer focused. And I think from there, it really kind of gets into all the downstream things like sales, um, support, you know, what to do after, you've, you know, after your customer has sold something, how customers can self-service, how customers can have automated service. Perfect example being how Delta automated their email. They, they automated that. They automated that customer empowerment to me. They empowered me to find success and satisfaction without me having to do anything. I think that's, that, that's what we talk about when we talk about empowering your customers. And then guys, that leads into loyal customers, right? When, you, when you're talking to your customers and you tell them, folks, I can bring you a solution conversation. That's gonna help us create loyalty within your customer base. That's gonna help create empowerment and automation and self-service in your customer base. Trust me, they're gonna to wanna to listen to you because you're bringing them something that is incredibly powerful and that stuff goes all the way up to the executive level. And I think that's a lot of value in that. So here's how you scope this work, guys. These are the things you wanna look for when you're talking to your customers and how you can try to understand if they have customer experience needs and how some of the tools that Campango can support you with uh, you know, will help you escalate that conversation. Let's say one of your customers has poor CSAT, customer satisfaction. They themselves have low customer satisfaction. The way we solve that is by making sure that their data, all their data in the back end is connected. So with Delta, the fact that Mort called, the fact that Mort has called in the past, the fact that Mort's flight was delayed, all of that is connected data. And when you expose that to the internal worker, you are then giving them that 360 view. And the Salesforce platform is a fantastic way to do that. I think within that, you can also then look at transparency of data. You can show the worker themselves how effective are we in solving our customers' needs, our customers' problems. And having that service level transparency can be excuse me, can be critical, and we can do a lot of that through surveys. Now, if we implement that strategy, what are we gonna get? Well, for me, it was the first call resolution the first time I called Delta. They knew I had a bad experience, and they solved it right away. I did not have to call back. They didn't, you know, like, they didn't say, hey, we need to check up on the flight, we need to check up why it was delayed. They had all that information because they had connected data. And then that created trust and loyalty in me. You heard Scott allude to worker experience. When you have a good customer experience, you have a good worker experience because people want to work with happy customers. Nobody wants to work with unhappy customers. So when your workers are working with happy customers, they're going to want to stay. So when you're working with one of your customers and they tell you, hey, you know, so-and-so and tell us his partner, I have some issues with worker attrition. That is a great opportunity to start talking to them about customer experience. Some of the strategies we can employ there is gamification, getting those workers involved, more training education, 
guys, simple things like better communication. All these things increase your worker experience and that increase in worker experience and benefit is gonna lead to less attrition issues. And of course, you can see the impact of why people wanna be part of organizations that are offering them training and strong communication, right? They kind of get that sense of belonging. That, you know, like the education shows a commitment to professional growth uh, you know, and being part of something bigger. I like that we put belonging twice because that's super awesome. I think another thing is if you have customers that are talking about having issue with getting good talent, I think increasing your customer experience is a great opportunity to identify and collect and bring on stronger talent. Getting feedback from your customers can help you create that social network presence and social media presence. Marketing cloud and social studio within marketing cloud is a fantastic way to do that. Uh, we have helped implement many of our customers with this concept of talk to a worker. So if you have someone who is, uh, you know, so if you have a customer that's going through an interview process, you know, we can teach them how they can, ex they can leverage their existing employees to help create a better experience. And I think that creates that industry leadership around, you know, how, you know, how do you get into that, you know, top 10 places to work type of a thing. And I think the impact of that is you're ending up using your internal uh, and your known quantities like your, in, you know, like your current customers, your current employees, you're now using them uh, as essentially recruiters uh, and that can kind of help you do a better forecasting of your talent as well as um, a better you know, understanding of kind of doing some like public news and things like that. Um, great, yeah, so we, we actually, I just want to stop here for a moment. We did have a question come in regarding the Delta example. Do we know if Delta uses Salesforce and are they a client of campaign? So Delta uh, most definitely uses Salesforce. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I used to work for a company that helped with uh, a big part of their service cloud setup. Uh, Delta, unfortunately, is not currently a Campango uh, customer, but uh, you know, I've got this great talk track now around my customer service experience, so you better believe I'll be sending someone over there an email to see right. if I can solicit some work. <laughs> yes, Vinay, if you have contacts over there. <laughs> yeah, man, let us know. Delta. <laughs> Get us in there. <laughs> so, I think this is a really powerful, powerful quote, and I think this is something that Kathleen had found. And I like to read this out loud, because it's kind of a fun one. This is, this is kind of a fun one, because this comes from, this comes from Southwest Airlines, right? So we're talking about airlines there, and this is another airline kind of within that competitive side of Delta, and it says, we believe that if we treat our employees right, so now they're talking about their worker experience. If we treat our employees right, they will treat our customers right. And that is just that propagation of worker experience to customer experience. And in turn, that results in increased business and profits. And I think Southwest is a great example of that. So guys, what we're trying to tell you here is when you're talking to your customers, customer experience is the end product. That is the destination. The journey is worker experience. And your satchel for the journey are the tools that can pango services like the Salesforce platform. So you empower their worker. You empower your customer through Campango and Salesforce. And the benefit that they see is their customer experience. Really powerful stuff, guys. These are conversations we love having. If you have identified a customer who has issues with attrition, they have issues with talent management, they have issues with a low CSAT, uh, please get ourselves, in, you know, please, please get us involved. You guys all know who Scott is. Uh, you know, you guys all, you know, obviously have a direct line to me. We can help you navigate these strategic conversations. We're very passionate about the customer experience. The nice part is we can share with you stories and experiences where we have implemented tools that have created a strong worker experience, which has then led to a fantastic customer experience. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys uh, are coming, but maybe Kathleen, you can cover a little bit about our upcoming CX summits that are going to be happening across the country. Um, yeah, I think that's a good segue into more conversation around customer experience. Uh, so Kathleen, I'll let you kind of talk about that because I know we only have a couple of minutes left. Yeah, so thanks so much. We do ha have a few CX summits and the purpose of the CX summits are to bring together um, and really showcase the alignment between the vision of Intellisys and how it is empowering channel partners, right, to, to drive CX. Uh, for their own customers and how that aligns with um, how Campango fits into that and Salesforce. We will actually have Intellisys, Salesforce, and Campango all on the stage together talking about 
um, everybody is kind of focus on CX and how each of us fit into that puzzle um, in order to, again, empower you, the channel partner, uh, who owns the relationship with, with the customer and how we help, just like Scott was saying, help you elevate those conversations and ultimately become really indispensable, right? And much stickier because um, you are now talking about long and larger end-to-end -end solutions versus just you know, one technology platform. So we have a CX Summit coming up in, in Chicago mid-May. Uh, we also have one in New York and San Francisco. Um, so you will actually be seeing a lot of these uh, advertised through Intellisys, also through Campango. So if you have any questions about those, let us know. Um, we do have a, a question here uh, regarding commissions. So there's an understanding we don't pay residual commissions. Um, but the question is, what do you mean by payments to the sales agent being evergreen? So when you, sorry, when you sign a, a customer with Campango and we are engaged in the relationship with these guys and start building statements of work and delivering services, quite often what we find is that this uh, initial project will lead to additional projects. So think of a roadmap from starting their journey with, with Salesforce um, to adding you know, different services that Salesforce have. Starting with Service Cloud, adding Marketing Cloud, then looking at you know, Pardot, for example. These are all additional phased implementations. And you as the IntelliSys partner who brings that customer to Campango um, is tagged against that customer. And everything that we do with that customer going forward um, is a commissionable back to yourselves. Now that also covers things like change orders. Uh, every invoice that goes out to the customer, you will see a share of. So whilst this isn't a traditional uh, monthly recurring revenue model, we have customers that we invoice on a monthly basis for for um, you know 12, 18, 24 months at a time because of the number of different projects that we're running with them. So today, uh, these uh, uh, customer interactions are evergreen, and obviously we just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that, whether you sat in the room or not, when the next phase gets signed, it is comped back to you. Yeah, and just to add to that, so a couple, so, so a couple ways to really kind of think about this is when Scott earlier talked about Campango having about five or 600 customers in our history, but doing well over a thousand projects, uh, we rarely do one-off projects. So when we meet with a customer, uh, we may engage them on a very specific need or a very specific pain point. But once we're in, we develop that trusted advisor relationship and that helps us grow into, uh, you know, into more business. So, so that's essentially the context behind Evergreen is once we're in, we are now helping build your book of business. We are now helping uh, you know, grow more revenue payments for you by us kind of organically doing what we do best, which is you know, get, you know, get multiple deals. And guys, when we think about customer experience, um, customer experience is a journey. Uh, customer experience is not something you turn on with a switch, because if you did, everybody would do it. But customer experience is based on a connected technology strategy. So now, when we talk about that, you're talking about engaging with your customer on multiple Salesforce conversations, and you guys will continue to earn benefit from all those conversations financially. Mm -hmm. I would just add to that because this has come up in other conversations that, you know, CRM empowers that because it provides direction, the data provides direction on what needs to be improved um, within your own organization in order to improve CX, right? And, and begin to perhaps even monetize some of that. So I think um, I just want to point that out because some of those questions come up, like how does CRM play into that or the data play into that? Um, and it actually helps provide actionable insights for an organization on what needs to be uh, improved or what somebody's doing well at and where investments need to be made in order to you know really support a CX strategy. Um, good. So it doesn't look like we have any other questions in the Q and A. I just want to thank Mort and Scott for taking the time um, to present today, and also of course for the dozens of you on the line to join us. So look for some emails from uh, Scott with this recording and some other valuable content. Please feel free to reach out to Scott directly uh, if you want to set up any time and delve a little bit deeper. Or if you do think that there are clients uh, who might be right for this type of a conversation, we love to be brought in early 
and uh, support those conversations and interactions. So everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you so much.